this year's Holy Convocation uh, spoke uh, volumes to my heart and um, and is a real central focus to who I am as an individual and what my assignment is. The theme for this year's Convocation um, is kingdom expansion through strategic movement. And um, one of the one of the ideas about any level of kingdom expansion um, is that it takes strategy and it takes the mobility to make it happen once the plan is solidified. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. Give me a moment. I, I almost thought I wasn't going to have my notes to teach from today, but God is good. Isn't that great? Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. Um, uh, here we find a great foundation to the Lord's plan in creation. His plan to expand, his plan to uh, build upon a general idea, a general um, intention of his own heart. One of the things about any level of kingdom building is that there are no accidents or coincidences or happenstances in the kingdom. Uh, everything that we do when it involves um, God, when it involves movement, must be intentional. Uh, that means it takes plans, it takes strategy, it takes uh, the mind uh, of individuals who are connected to some level of architecture, some level of plan, uh, some level of uh, intention in God uh, to bring that thing to pass. One of the things I, I, I find out as I encounter people all over uh, that a lot of times we involve our body, we involve our spirit, uh, we dance and we shout, but nobody wants to use their mind. They don't want to use their brain or the part of their uh, thinking capacity that, br that brings them uh, into a closer uh, fulfillment to what God's placed there. The word expansion, let's look there, uh, is the act of becoming bigger or making something bigger. The act of expanding or more complete and detailed work that is based on something shorter or of previous state. If you find that I'm talking a little bit slow, it's because I'm a very passionate I'm a very passionate speaker, so I have to remind myself that I'm an evening lecturer instead of an evening preacher, okay? <laughs> so, so I'm working on my volume. I'm working on my volume because it's very easy to get excited. Uh, so whenever we look at the idea of expansion, it is the building of a previous state and the intention for that previous state to become larger. One of the things about our lives individually and any level of corporate assignment, there must be some level or some intention uh, to build upon something that has already been laid, something that's already been founded, and uh, to make it greater, to make it greater. So then our intention is above anything that's a micro, anything that's on the smaller level. Uh, we are connecting to something that's very uh, much larger than what our individual lives can accomplish. So that's the necess necessity uh, in us connecting uh, with larger assignments or larger visions uh, that a greater a greater scope of God's power or a greater scope of kingdom ability can be expanded through the length and the breadth of the earth. All right, Genesis chapter 1, we find that God uh, comes on the earth and he encounters the earth without void and uh, form, without form and void and darkness uh, was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God, the Bible says, moves upon the face of the waters and God says... Uh, when we look at the earth being without form and void, we're speaking here uh, concerning the loss of structure, the loss of the loss of building blocks, the loss of pillars to any level of building. And whenever anything is without form or whenever anything is without without whenever anything is void is loss of that structure and is loss of the concrete pillars that's needed for any levels of building. So then we move aside, we move aside, we move aside from all of the emotional things that cause us to be uh, churchy, the emotional things that cause us just to go with the normal mode of what the status quo in the body of Christ is. And we sit down and we consider, we consider the, the, uh, the possibility and the potential of what we are involved in becoming much larger than what we are seeing right now. It takes another level of spirit to discernment, another level of sensitivity to look at something that is without form, something that is void, and have enough clear clarity within yourself to build upon something you cannot see. It takes some spiritual power. It does not only take spiritual power, but it takes spiritual intelligence. And I believe what the 
Spirit of God is pushing us into is an awareness of the power of the mind of Christ. Not just the power of the anointing in the shakings or in the touchings or in the tinglings that we sense during praise and worship or even during the church experience. We're literally talking about the download of the mind of Christ. The Bible says that Christ has been made unto us all wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is situational direction. Not only in the circumstances that are personal and the circumstances that are emotional, but the circumstances that will take pure intelligence to move us through. It's going to take a download and it's going to take an upgrade of our mindsets to push us in this level of building where it is just not concerning the four walls of what we're looking at now. It is concerning the in, it, the invisible expansion of global vision that goes beyond borders. It goes beyond cultures. It goes beyond, all right, these individual pursuits. There is a connection that must be made through the mind of Christ being downloaded inside of you that you might make a connection with something that's well beyond yourself beloved of God I know sometimes we think it's about us but this thing is so well beyond us it will amaze you It'll amaze you. It is, it'll amaze you. So it takes a download of the mind of Christ. It takes you pausing. It takes you settling yourself out of the, uh, sometimes the, the movement of our lives and the movement of what we think ministry should be, the movement of what we think business should be, the movement of we, what we think our families and our homes should be. It takes you settling down, all right, to receive this mind upgrade. The, I believe what God is attempting to do through us, he's attempting to stimulate our th- Thalamus again. He's attempting to stimulate the parts of our thinking capacity that will cause us to embrace a part of ourselves that we have forgotten as we have come down here. There is a part of your personality and there's a part of your spirit man. There's a part of your thinking capacity that the earth experience has caused you to forget. Revelation tells us something very wonderful. He says, he says, I want you to remember the place from whence you've fallen, the place from where you've come, the place that your mind has been downgraded, not even to consider that God was able to bring you to that place again. Many of us have visions and dreams. Calm down here. Many of us have visions and dreams and places within our heart that we have long downgraded, belittled, and devalued, all right, only through the earth experience, only through the situations that the Bible says are common to man but it takes now another pursuit the Bible talks about repenting he talks about turning he talks about remembering and these things take a connection it takes your ability to connect with a place within yourself that you are actually able to bring reproduction out of you're actually able to bring fertility out of that internal place as your mind is upgraded through your connection with what the mind of Christ Amen. All right. So here at Genesis 1, uh, chapter 1, he says, he says that God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. There was a loss of structure there. The Bible says, and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Whenever we are thinking and considering the face of anything, we are looking at the complete picture. We are looking at the, 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 the foundation of what that thing really is. When someone says, I need you to take this for face value that they're speaking of the complete picture of that particular thing so God 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 when we're talking about kingdom and I really have to pause sometimes when I'm having conversations with people all right and we're talking about kingdom I really have to ask very simple questions to discern and to determine are we talking about church or are we talking about kingdom because we've become church masters, all right, and we have given the power of the child, all right, from the power of the father that created it. Whatever the church is becoming and whatever it is being activated in, it is only coming out of the force of the kingdom. So when God moves upon the face of the waters, he is literally moving upon the complete picture of what the plan was in his heart, not ours. And he is bringing evaluation. 
He's bringing evaluation to the complete picture that is in his heart. Now, what does God do? The Bible says, and God said, all right, all right. God himself here is a qualifying voice to move this building project forward. And that's why a lot of the things in the body of Christ cannot be progressed because there's a lack of authentic qualifying voices. There's a whole lot of preachers talking. There's a whole lot of teachers teaching. But there is a lack of qualified voices to move the building blocks of the kingdom forward. If we're going to see vision move forward, if you're going to see business move forward, there has to be a quality, a distinctive quality that comes out of your voice that is not common, that is not familiar, and that is not devalued. The Bible says, the Bible says that if the, if the salt loses its savor, wherewith shall the earth be salted? We're talking about distinctive quality. We're talking about a certain brand. We're talking about a certain creed, a certain, a certain type of individual that has a qualifying voice to move it forward. So God uses his qualifying voice and he begins something that I like to call systematic creation. It is, no, it is no accident. It's not happenstance. He is systematically creating it. He does not create man first. He does not create the things that would cause us to jump first. He doesn't create the things that would cause us to be excited. Now pause, pause. Let's have a pause a moment. See, a lot of times people will only connect with your life, all right, when they see things that they are excited about being produced. It takes somebody that really loves you and loves what you're called to do to get connected to a part part of you that is not beautiful or part of you that is not structured yet or part of you that is not well put together yet we're talking about systematic creation we're talking literally about the foundation being laid and where the bible says then we come on that foundation which is laid which is christ and then he tells us be careful how you build on it so whenever we are systematically creating, we are, being, we are being very meticulous and very systematic and very circumspect on how we are building. That's why you don't, we don't rush to do things or we, don't, we, we just are not swift to do things because it is systematic creation. Because everything that God creates from this moment on must work in harmony with the foundation that is below it. And where we find disharmony and where we find a strife in malice in kingdom building is because we are, have not utilized the intelligence to systematically build. All right. So the person that's on top of this person doesn't like the person below this person because we have just thrown things trying to build something tall without understanding that it has to be systematically created. The foundation has to agree with the thing that's on top of it. Or it's not going to work right. Systematic creation is the ability of God to cause a group of unrelated, uncommon, but connected things to move or work together. Systematic creation is the ability of God. To cause a group of unrelated, uncommon, but connected things to move together. And to work together in harmony towards a particular goal or plan. One of the things about a building is the foundation, most of the times, the foundation is one material and then another material is on top of it. All right. It is of no, it is of no disrespect to the foundation that the pillars are not made of the same thing. And this is where we're going to miss kingdom and we're going to miss the greater scope of vision that God calls us to be in. Because what we want to do is we want glory to God, all of the materials to look look like the same thing, act like the same thing, talk like the same thing and this is not how God's going to build his kingdom. How God's going to build his kingdom is taking different materials and different sources and building it one on another systematically as he chooses. So the heart of systematic creation is absolute intention. Say absolute intention. It is absolute intention based on a predetermined plan. All right. There can be no accidents, no coincidental, coincidental occurrences when harmony is to be achieved. It has to be a relation of the mind. Now watch this. Genesis 1 verse number 11. God said, let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed, fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. 
It was so, and the earth brought forth grass, herb yielding seed after its kind, the tree, the tree yielding fruit after whose seed was in itself after its kind, and God saw that it was good. God now here systematically begins to create. He systematically, systematically begins to create. He forms the grass. He starts to cover things. He, he forms the plants. He, start for, he forms the fruit trees, and he forms the herbs on the grass. And this, look what God does. He places the seed of this particular thing within itself. And it is important that we understand how the seed uh, has been created and where the seed is because there will be no need to go back and recreate the same thing when there's an awareness of what's inside of you. We waste time trying to recreate what we already know we have the seed in us to reproduce. Now look, God's foundational idea here was to create something that would be self-producing based on its ability to, number one, know itself. And one of, the, one of the causes in us not being able to produce is, number one, that we don't know ourselves. And not only don't we know ourselves, we don't know the quality of ourselves, and we don't know that we have the ability to bring something out of ourselves that will cause us to live in joy and peace and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. As long as you are looking for other individuals to expand the kingdom of God in you you are going to wait a long time you're going to be disappointed you're going to be damaged you're going to be upset and you're going to be disheartened the seed was in himself and he says number one he says all right know yourself he says number two it's your ability to know that it is that to know that it already has what's needed to produce again. Whatever is on the inside of you, you have to know that you already have what's needed to reproduce again. Genesis 1 and 26, systematic creation. God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, fall of the air, over all the earth, every creeping thing. Verse number 28, God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth. And then he uses a word, he says, subdue it. Now the word subdue there uh, for us in the con concept of this message uh, is to acquire the knowledge of and then to become a master over. Whenever we are building systematically and we're creating foundation and we're creating the building blocks upon that foundation, there has to be a desire and an intention in you uh, to, to acquire the knowledge of and then to be a master over over this means now that you have to move away all right from all of these actions and activities and become as the bible says if any man strive for the mastery you must learn how to be temperate self-controlled all right if you're going to subdue anything you have to first acquire the knowledge of it and you have to stop yourself from making emotional irrational decisions that are purely temporal that are not connected to your eternal and your permanent place in vision you have to calm yourself down and be like the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. And focus on the predetermined plan and the predetermined level of vision that you might be able to systematically create. God here, 2 and 7, Genesis, forms man of the dust of the ground, breathes into his nostrils the breath of life. Man becomes a living soul. Now watch this. Adam, Adam here is being formed, having the absolute ability to reproduce. The seed is in himself because God has systematically created him. He's created the grass, he's created the, the herbs, he's created the fruit trees, he's created everything that Adam needs to survive to this point. He, it, he does not uh, take the risk in placing Adam in a place that now he has, to, he has to create things to sustain Adam. He places Adam already in a place where everything that he's needed is able to sustain him. Everything is already there. The Bible says he separates the garden into four parts. He places the rivers there. The waters are, waters are already watering the earth. The only thing Adam has to do when he gets up is what? Cultivate it, till it, take care of it, right? So God forms Adam having the seed with 
within himself to reproduce. But listen here, Adam did not know and he was not aware of, watch this, and this is where we're going to miss our reproduction. Adam does not know where and who is going to catch the seed, all right, in order for reproduction to take place. That's why you can never try to second guess or out guess God because you don't know the avenue, the place, the type of people, the place of your response that God's going to use your seed to fertilize. He had the seed, he was housing it, but he was in a place where nothing was relating to him and where nothing stimulated what he knew he had the power to produce. If you do not connect with your place of response, you will constantly be connected to people and in places that do not stimulate the seed in you that you know you can make happen. And many of you have business plans and you have church, churches and you have anointings and you have giftings and visions. And if there's nothing happening in your life, there's nothing happening in your, your, your mind, there's nothing happening in your home, there's nothing happening in your community, there's nothing happening in your state. And this is, this is because you have blocked God out of connecting you to your place of response. All of us has a place of response. That when your feet get there, when your life gets there, when your word hits that soil, the earth itself reacts the bible says when you come to the hill of the lord that i will make the places about my hill a blessing he says i'm going to cause the earth to supernaturally and naturally react to who you are when your feet get there that's why god was able to tell joshua that wherever the soles of your feet tread upon i'm giving it to you because joshua would now have to take the boldness and move from dead things and dead people and go to places where fear was in order for the earth to respond you want the earth really to respond to you go in some places where you're afraid to go listen listen Gosh. this is a, a little too passionate come calm down listen adam is adam is there god god's formed him god breathes in him breath of life adam becomes a living soul Adam becomes a living soul. Adam starts to move. Adam starts to move. God's, God, God moves here. And God says, he says, he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. He says in uh, Genesis 2 and 18, he says, it's not good for man to be all one. He says, it's not good for man to be alone. He says, he says I, I just don't want you to walk around here and uh, have the seed and have visions and have dreams and aspirations. And there's no place and there's nothing that you can connect with this to. He says, he says I'm going to, I want, I want to, I want to, I want to make you a help meet. Mm? Now, 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 I want to show you here. I want to show you here. I want to show you here how your help meet comes and how to know when your help meet comes. And I'm not just talking about a man and I'm not just talking about a woman, but I want to show you how God views what a help meet is. He, he, he says, he says, he says, he says that I'm going to give him a help meet. And the Bible says the Lord God caused a deep sleep. Somebody say pause. He calls Adam. He caused Adam to live in a place of inactivity for a moment. He caused Adam to live in a space in his life where nothing was happening, nothing was going on, nothing, no, there was no money. The, the business, you know, sunk. The family sunk. All your supporters left you. He caused Adam to be in a place of inactivity, not to kill Adam or to kill what was in him, but to bring something out of him that he could relate to. See, see, a lot of times we're around things and people that we have absolutely no relation to. There is nothing about them that makes us jump. There's nothing about them that makes us excited. There's nothing about them that makes us want to sit down and listen to anything they have to say. And the only way you are going to be able to get your help me from God in the thing that you know is your reality is, Lord God, being okay having a deep sleep for a moment Jacob is running from Esau Jacob is running from Esau Jacob is running from Esau and the Bible says Jacob gets tired right all right he picks up some stones and he lays them down all right you remember that he lays them down and he falls asleep 
When he falls asleep in the middle of his journey out of fear, he falls asleep. And the Bible says he dreams a dream. And behold, he sees a ladder whose feet were on the earth. Oh, you're hearing this. Whose top was in the heaven. And behold, what? He saw angels coming down and up. All right. The, 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 the down from up shows that there was something in Jacob that was corresponding to a higher place. But his paws and his sleep, Lord God, made the earth and the spirit connection for him. And if you are not okay with pause, if you are not okay in your levels of inactivity, you will never be able to receive the download of your hearing this and the upgrade in your mentality. Some of us should have taken the five-year pause like we did because during that five-year pause, our mindsets were upgraded. Something. He dreams a dream. He dreams a dream. I've got to go. He dreams a dream. He dreams a dream and he sees the, the ladder whose feet were on the earth, who, whose top was in the heaven. Angels coming down and up on it. Now watch this. He sleeps during a time of great fear. He sleeps during a time of great uncertainty because he did not know what Esau's attitude was against him. But he was willing to experience the rest of God that his mind would take another location. When we talk about being seated with Christ in heavenly places, we are not talking about our bodies, beloved. We are talking about the location of our minds and the location of our spirits that we might see beyond. What happens? What happens? What happens? What happens? He wakes up. What does he say? He says, this was none other than the house of God, and I didn't even know it. This was a place that God caused a deep sleep to come on me and brought something out of me that I could relate to. That I'm not, I'm not merely on the run anymore. I am now running towards a purpose because of this, because of this place. So it's this place. Now, 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 all right, so let's go back to Genesis. God, God lets a deep sleep fall on Adam. And the Bible says he slept. Now watch this. And Adam said, when he woke up, Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Now listen, I know it would, it would make all of us feel really good if we, if we just assumed that Eve just looked like Adam. Or Eve looked like his sister. Or Eve looked like somebody in his family. But see, when Adam wakes up and says, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, Adam's internal capacity recognized that the thing that he was looking at, all right, now watch this, watch this. The thing that he was looking at came out of him and God would use what came out of him to reproduce. See, 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 what we're doing is we're trying to get reproduction and kingdom expansion to come from without. But kingdom expansion comes from within when being connected to the right place and the right people. So instead of praying in, y'all ain't talking. Instead of, instead of praying in, what we should be praying for is without. We need to pray it out. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. A deep sleep falls on him. Deep sleep falls on him. He says, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Now watch this, verse number 24. He says, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. So, so the intention of kingdom expansion and this generational expansion reality is that I make a choice when I've received the upgrade and the download. I make a choice, now watch this, to... Move my attitude from what has produced me huh, and cleave to what's come out of me. Did, did you hear what I just said? You leave from what, what's produced you. All right. That's, so, so you can't be jealous. You, 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 can't be, you can't be controlling. You can't be manipulating because something has to leave what's... Something has to leave you, and what leaves you must, be, must connect with what's come out of them. And that's, that's why you've got you've to embrace generational expansion and generational reality where you're okay with releasing what you've produced that they might produce what they, y'all ain't talking what's come out of them. There, there has to be a connection. So you leave, and you cleave, and then you produce from what's come out of you instead of what's 
without. So true reproduction is to occur systematically. It has to occur as we become one with what is internal in power. Uh, generational expansion reality uh, deals with making the internal connection with something or someone that does not look like you, but is of you. This level of expansion cannot occur without you having a revelation of what you've been given, your ability to produce it in others, and the location of your response. Genesis 11 and 1, and I'm going to close here. Thank you for dealing with my passion. Genesis 11 and 1. And then we'll stop. And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. Verse 3. They said one to another, go to, let us make brick, burn them thoroughly. Verse 4. And they said, let us build. Say build. They said, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. I'm going to help maybe about 10, 15 of you in just one second. Number one, they said, all right, they had one language, one speech. Generational expansion reality begins when there's one language, one speech, harmony, one with another. We've embraced systematic creation. We're one with, we're one with each other. They make a plan. They said, all right, let's build. And not only do they say let's build, but they have strategy on how they're going to build and what they're going to use. Now, verse number six, they're building so well. They are building well. They are achieving and accomplishing much. In the middle of their expansion project that is wonderful. God comes in verse number six and said, let us go down and see what's going on. He evaluates the face of the thing. I'm going to mess up right here. He says, he says, we've got to stop this. We've got to stop this because if I don't stop it, nothing that they imagine to do, whatever they imagine to do, they won't be stopped from it. Now watch. How we have viewed this is, we have viewed this as a judgment against their building. But what this literally shows us is the power of absolute harmony. And what looks as, what looks as though was a judgment in their agenda was in actuality the pinnacle of their mission to build an expanding breed. See, a lot of times when you look at your life and you look at these stops and pauses and what you knew was working well and you try to figure out, well, is this the devil? Is this God? Or did I mess up? Or did, did, I, did I miss it? See, 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 the stop is not, the stop is not the judgment. The stop is actually the accomplishment that you have developed to the point that you just can't build in that one place. It was a maturing of a mindset. If this was not a maturing of the mindset then God would have not just scattered the language he would have scattered their minds I want you to think I want you to think about that he says he says I want to stop them from building the tower in this one place I don't want to stop them from building I don't want them to limit building the tower in this one place. If you don't embrace kingdom expansion, you will build well, but it will only be in one place. And what people look at your life as being your scattered seasons are in actuality your most, your most matured places. We're talking about disbursement. We're talking about distribution. Hmm? We're, we're, talking, we're talking about spreading the DNA that they would not be isolated to one tower. There are four, four intentions that I take my seat. 
Luke 14, 28 says, which of you intending to build a tower sits not down first, count it the cost, whether he has enough, enough to finish it. Number one, if we're going to expand the kingdom, you have to have an intention to build. There's a whole lot of people connected to you that just don't have an intention to help you build anyway. Number two, the intention to prepare. Number three, the intention to provide resources. Number four, the intention to finish. God systematically creates. He systematically builds. He systematically forms. He systematically teaches us to move from what's produced us to what's come out of us that we might reproduce. He causes us to be okay with our moments of pause, our moments of inactivity, to mature our mind. And then he causes us to be okay with any level of building that looked glorious at one point and received a pause. And then to be okay with just not building in one place. When we talk about kingdom expansion, people, we're talking about moving beyond borders. Locating your place of response wherever your seed is scattered. This is kingdom expansion through strategic movement. Strategy takes time. Strategy takes thinking. 